welcome to the channel master graduates today we will see gamma function gamma function is defined as gamma this symbol of gamma gamma n and this equals to integral 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x into x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay and this integral is convergent when n is positive okay now let's see the proof for this convergence condition okay so but before we get into the proof let's see some test first test is i'm writing this test as t1 okay so test is comparison test limit form so in this test suppose if we have two functions f and g there are two function f of x and g of x okay f x and g x both are positive on interval a b okay open at a and closed at b and a is the only point of infinite discontinuity of function f and g and if if limit x tends towards a plus that is right hand limit of function f of x over g of x if this limit equals to l and here l is some non zero number okay then the two proper integrals integration from a to b fx dx and integration from a to b gx dx converges and diverges together okay so this test is known as comparison test let's see another test to writing this test as t2 this test is also known as comparison test first one is known as comparison test limit form and the second one is simply comparison test if we have two functions fx and gx such that this function f is positive and this function f is less than equals to gx okay for all x belongs to this interval a to infinity okay then if integration a to infinity gx dx if this integral is convergent then integral a to infinity fx dx is convergent okay and if integration a to infinity fx dx is divergent then integration a to infinity gx dx is divergent that means if bigger function is convergent then a smaller function is also convergent or if a smaller function is divergent then bigger function will also be divergent okay now see the proof of convergence of gamma function so we'll start we have integral as 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay this function has ambiguity at x equal to 0 and x equal to infinity okay and uh, this factor is defined for all values of x okay it is also defined when x is 0 and uh, e raised to power minus x is also defined when x is infinity okay when x tends to infinity e raised to minus x goes to 0 okay so the problem with the second factor x raised to power n minus 1 okay x raised to n minus 1 is not defined when x is 0 if this factor goes into denominator then at x equal to 0 it won't be defined and 
when x tends to infinity this factor x raised to power n minus 1 won't be defined if it is in numerator okay so let's find the condition when this whole integral will be convergent okay now we can write this integral as 0 to 1 e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx plus second integral integral 1 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay now we have here two integrals okay suppose this integral is i1 and this integral is i2 okay so in i1 at x equal to 0 the integrand is not defined and in i2 when x tends to infinity integrand won't be defined okay so now we can work out separately for both integrals i1 and i2 so let's start with integral i1 now let's apply test to t1 okay taking function gx as x raised to power n minus 1 okay and this function gx is positive in interval 0 1 okay now finding limit x tends towards 0 plus f of x over g of x okay f of x is what f of x is integrand of integral i1 so we'll have limit x tends towards 0 plus f of x is e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 over x raised to power n minus 1 okay now we can see this factor cancels out and now we are left with limit x tends towards 0 plus e raised to power minus x and this limit will be 1 which is non-zero okay so from test t1 we can say that to improper integrals for function fx and gx converges and diverges together okay now let's see whether this function gx is convergent or divergent okay now limit is from 0 to 1 gx is x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay we can integrate this integral very easily so its integration will be x raised to power n over n and limit is 0 to 1 okay so when x is 1 we'll have 1 raised to power n when x is 0 we'll have 0 raised to power n okay now this part 0 raised to power n will only be defined when it is in numerator okay so this part will stay numerator when n is positive so when n is positive this integration this integration 0 to 1 x raised to power minus 1 dx is convergent when n is greater than 0 okay now from test t1 we can say that uh, integration from 0 to 1 fx fx is e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx is convergent when n is greater than 0 okay so for i1 we got the condition now let's see for integral i2 okay so integral i2 is 1 raised to power infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay now from the property of exponential function we can say that e raised to power x will be greater than x raised to power n plus 1 for sufficiently large value of x okay exponential function always exceeds a polynomial after some value so we can say that this e raised to power x will be greater than x raised to power n plus 1 for sufficiently large value of x suppose that value is x naught okay now if we take the reciprocal then inequality will change so we'll have 1 over e raised to power x is less than equals to 1 over x raised to power n plus 1 when x is greater than x naught right now we can write this as e raised to power minus, minus x is less than x raised to power minus n minus 1 when x is greater than x naught now multiplying 
this factor okay so on multiplying we'll have e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 and in right hand side we'll have x raised to power minus 2 right okay so we have this function is less than 1 over x square and you can see that this is integrand of integral i2 now applying test to t2 so this integral x naught to infinity 1 over x square dx this is convergent why so because its integration will be minus 1 over x and limit is from x 0 to infinity so when we put the limit we will have minus 1 over x naught and plus 1 over infinity okay and this value tends towards 0 so we have minus 1 over x naught so we can see that this integral is convergent okay so from from test t2 we can say x naught to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power minus n minus 1 dx is convergent from comparison test t2 okay now i2 is what i2 is 1 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay we can also write this integral as 1 to x naught from the property of definite integral we can write this as 1 to x naught e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx plus x naught to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx okay integral integrand of this integral is defined for all values between 1 to x naught so this integral is convergent okay and this integral i have just proved that it is convergent so i2 will be convergent for all values of n i2 is convergent for all n i1 is convergent when n is greater than 0 and i2 is convergent for all values of n so the whole improper integral i is convergent when n greater than 0 okay so this is the proof that we were looking for now this video ends here and i have a quick announcement to make those students who are preparing for exams like csr net gate and other ms intense examination can buy our real analysis handwritten notes for a very reasonable price for only rupees 80 so if you are interested you can contact us through this whatsapp number thank you thanks for watching